we're going to show you an example of adding vectors with unit vector notation. So here I've got two force vectors, 1.8 newtons directed at 60 degrees and 2.44 newtons of force directed at 325 degrees. Remember, we use the x-axis, the positive x-axis, as zero degrees, and we measure our angles counterclockwise from that axis. Or if we want to go clockwise, we can, but now the angle becomes negative 35. So you can see here, 325 degrees is the same location as negative 35 degrees. And this is important when we find our components, we can choose to use 325 or negative 35. Either one will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to break our vectors down into their X and Y components. And we're going to use sine and cosine to do that. So here I've labeled the X and Y components of vector A, AX in red, AY in green. And likewise, my X and Y components for B, BX in blue, and BY in yellow. The X component of A is going to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, and the Y component will be the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. Recall that for unit vector notation, we use the letter I for the X direction and J for the Y direction. Okay, so plugging in the numbers, we see that my X and Y components of vector A are 0.9 in the X direction, and 1.56 in the y direction, both of them being positive. And that's what we see. AX is in the positive x direction. AY is in the positive y direction. Vector B, however, has a positive x component, but it has a negative y component. So here's where you have to be careful with this angle. If you want to use 30, uh, if you want to use 325, you can see here the calculator is going to give you a negative number for BY. If you use negative 35, you're going to get a negative number. But I know a lot of people like to work with acute angles and, and be careful. If you make this one positive 35, you're still going to get the right magnitude for BY. But if you use positive 35, you can see here your calculator is going to give you a positive number. And so you have to manually put that negative sign in there if you use positive 35. So just alerting, to, alerting you to that little thing that you have to pay attention to there, that is a common, common source of mistake in a problem is to get the plus or minus sign of the component incorrect. Okay, so once you've got the X and Y components of A and B, we're going to add up the, the X column to get my total sum in the X direction, and we're going to add up the Y column to get my total sum in the y direction. And now this are the x and y components of the sum of a plus b, which we will call c. So I've drawn now 2.9 in the x and 0 0.16 in the y. And those are my x and y components of c. And so now I can draw the hypotenuse of that triangle. Remember, the hypotenuse vector by itself is the same or the equivalent as the sum of the x and the y components. So cx plus cy is the same as c. What is the magnitude and direction of c? Well, now I can use Pythagorean theorem here, you see, to find the magnitude of c. And to find this angle of direction that c points in, I'm going to use the inverse tangent of the opposite side and the adjacent side. Yes, I know the hypotenuse. I could use any function, sine, cosine, or tangent, but I choose to use the inverse tangent the op the, using the y and the x components. So here we go. Inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent is the y component over the x component. I plug in my numbers, and I come up with my angle of 3.2 degrees. So that means my vector c has a magnitude of 2.9 newtons, and it points in the direction of 3.2 degrees, and that is the answer for my vector sum of A plus B. What if, however, 
when I had these vectors, let's assume that vector A pointed into the second quadrant and vector B pointed into the third quadrant. In other words, it would look something like this. Now, my X component is to the left. My Y component is still positive, but my X component is to the left. The first calculation you see here is the calculation for the previous problem where both the uh, X and the Y components were positive. Now my X component is negative, and you see when I take the inverse tangent of this ratio, I get negative 3.1, which is an angle that points into the fourth quadrant. And certainly that is not where this vector is pointing. It's pointing into the second quadrant. So if your answer is ever in the second or third quadrant, you will need to add 180 degrees to your calculator's answer. So you see here, positive Y component and negative X component gave me negative 3.16 degrees. So I had to add 180 degrees to that to come up with my actual angle of the answer of, for this situation of 176.8. Now some helpful tips to remember. Remember that this is called magnitude angle notation right here. And that is the same thing, or it represents the same vector as the unit vector notation shown here. These are just two different ways of describing the same vector. Also, we talked about the angle. If you start at the positive x-axis with zero degrees and rotate counterclockwise, then your angle is positive. But if you go clockwise, your angle then is a negative angle.